Number two, plan ahead. And then if you go just one at a time. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay, so I, you can really get in trouble if you don't plan. And my first tip for planning ahead is again, the end in mind. Are you flipping this or are you gonna turn it into a rental? Or, which surprisingly happens all the time, are you gonna buy it and just sit on it and let it be vacant for 12 months? You know, that, that is actually a strategy some people use because they don't know what else to do. Um, is that property the one in Kearns or in Magna? No, th this one I'll tell you the quick little story about planning ahead. Uh, and, and you know, we're, we're learning every day. Like this is probably my 420th flip and I screwed up royally on it. So I'll, I'll tell you in a minute, but sometimes you've got to know what your exit strategy is and hopefully you know it ahead of time. But if you don't know it, what I don't want you to do is put a Band-Aid solution on a problem that could be fixed by just maybe losing some money, right? And so sometimes renting out your flip is a good idea, but sometimes it's a terrible idea because all you're doing is probably putting a Band-Aid on a time bomb that's gonna go off in a year or two, right? And, and you might be better off just sticking with your plan, flipping it, losing money, moving on. Right, so number two, know your position in the market. Is it a buyer's market or a sales, sales market, days on market? This goes to what Matt was talking about as to the crystal ball of what might be coming, what might not, right? Like the last little bit, especially during COVID, flippers cannot screw up. Like it's very, very hard to screw up, right? Because the market's been going up, it's saving everybody's bacon. So you gotta know where you're at and don't ever assume that it's gonna keep getting better and better and better. Now, the flip side of that is you may stop getting deals, right? Because there's always someone else going back to the other slide that's gonna view the world a little different. And they're gonna think, oh no, it's going up 5%. If it was $300,000, in fact, I had this exact conversation with the borrower today. Which, would you think if it was 350 today that it might be 370 you know, in three months? And I'm like, I don't know. You know, I would actually assume it's 340, but anyway. <laughs> well, what if you do a flip and you think that the sales price is going to be 350 and you make 10 grand, then it's 370, you make 30 grand. And so right now you look at a deal and you think, okay, well, I'll make 10 grand and do the same deal. So my theory on on that just in general is is be realistic about it. Like Matt said, maybe knock it down 5%. If you can still make money there, then you do it. And if you get surprised and you wake way more, way more on the back end, then then I just, you know, it's like a bonus, right? And, uh, but it kind of goes back to your, like I am very happy if I nail my rehab budget, I nail my timeline, but if the market, if I miss the market because it just goes down, I still think that's a win, right? Because I evaluated it right on my rehab, what I can control, I control, right? And so right now, you know, this strategy of planning ahead, there is like every time I do a comp right now, evaluating a property, I'll pull up like 40 available comparables. There's like one active, right? Everything is under contract and sold. So that's really good. Like I think you can tend to be a little bit more aggressive possibly now, if I start seeing, I love the MLS because when you pull up and you get the little dots on the map, you've got green for available or active, you've got orange for backup or under contract, then you've got red for sold. When you see a lot of greens, that you gotta pause because there's a lot of active inventory you're gonna be competing with. But if all you see is reds, you know, you probably got a good opportunity, right? So, okay, number three. Map out what and who you need and when. So this is my, you know, just very basic scope of work that I send out uh, for a checklist on my, um, you know, in, in evaluating a loan prospect. But again, this goes back to the planning. From day one, I wanna plan ahead, again, what that's gonna look like, right, on the back end, and then back in, what's my scope of work? I wanna plan that out. When am I gonna need cabinets? When am I gonna need carpet? Am I doing a structural thing? Do I need a permit, right? Like, you've gotta plan this out ahead of time. Okay, number four, due diligence. 
Okay, so there's a lot of things you don't know what's gonna happen. Like when you tear out a wall and you see a weird pipe going somewhere, you couldn't have seen that before, right? But you should be able to have enough time to swab, test for meth, check structural, maybe do a sewer scope, roof. The things you can control when you have time to control them, control it. Now, 322 Emory Street on the MLS, I had a due diligence period. I got a little cocky. I got a little like, I've done this before. This house has a foundation. It's a cute little house. Yeah, it's old, it's got wavy floors, but we're good. I don't, I don't need to do, I, I don't need to check the foundation on this thing. So I remodel it, you know, like $40,000 $40, remodel. It looks awesome. It's a little two bedroom, one bath. Um, we get it under contract day one. They do their full inspections. You know, they're like, we do kind of want to check the foundation. I'm like, yeah, go for it. It's, we're good, you know? Yeah, apparently it doesn't have a foundation. Um, it would have taken me five minutes to figure that out. I mean, I just got a little loose. I was running a little too fast. I was just like, this is a no brainer. I've done a hundred of these. So $20,000 later, we have a foundation and we lose money. So you know what? It's a success, right? I, I, I relearned something. Goliath, helical, or they're not uh, pylons or piers or whatever. Each one of those is about 1300 bucks. Um, this house is like an 1896 house. Um, they told me it would withstand like a, you know, 10 magnitude earthquake now, you know? So <laughs> we're set. So do your due diligence on the things you can't control when you have time to control them. Okay, five, small things that slow you down. Okay, plan ahead on this. I spent so many hours of my life forgetting to call and connect the gas, forgetting to pay the water bill, not connecting the water, you know, forgetting to turn the gas on in the winter and then having to shut off and then kicking it back on when the inspector comes, right? So figure out a system. The greatest thing I did in my, my whole time of flipping was about two years ago when with Dominion, Salt Lake City Utilities, and Rocky Mountain Power, I, I actually set up a master account online and I, I could just do it all online. I could pay online. I could have done this for like the last 15 years and I never did. And it saved me hours, thousands of hours, right? So plan ahead. I just, you know, sometimes you're moving too fast. You don't want to take that extra five minutes to figure it out. So, all right, that's number two.